shining on my face. Living's good this side of grace. I feel it working. Goodbye to the hurting. You woke me up, put me on my way. Amen, amen. Bless God. Bless God. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. This is our midweek Bible study lesson. Welcome to Life in Christ International Church. The Lord has been blessing us here at the church to get into the Word of God. And this month, this month here at the church, this month has been deemed as the month of hope. The Lord has been ministering to our lives about hope in the Bible. The Lord has been ministering to our lives about hope in the Word. And tonight that brings us right to God's divine appointment, right where he's designed and desired for us to be. So I want you all to join me in and with a word of prayer as we prepare to go into our midweek Bible study lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for uh, uh, this month of, of hope. We thank you, God, for revealing who you are in our lives as our divine hope. We thank you, Father, for this study. We thank you, Father, that we have a heart to serve, a heart, Father, to read your word, to grow and mature into all that you designed and purpose. Father, we invite you into this midweek Bible study lesson. We thank you, Father God, for life in Christ in the National Church. We thank you, Father God, for this midweek Bible study and this lesson. Father, anoint the reading of your word. Anoint the lesson, oh dear God. Cause us, Lord God, to continue to magnify your name. Cause us, oh dear God, to continue to glorify your name, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And we thank you for it now, Lord God. We bless you, oh God. We honor you, oh God, and we praise you. This is our time in the Word of God, and every Sunday morning, the Lord blesses us to um, have time in our Sunday school lesson, uh, but but we're in our midweek Bible study, and this, this shifts us just a little bit. Um, this takes us to another level, I believe, in the Word of God, and so with that, we're going to get into our lesson on tonight. Tonight, our lesson is coming from the Gospel. Um, the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, the Lord has been ministering to us from the Old Testament scriptures. And so tonight the Lord takes us into uh, the Gospel of Luke. Tonight we're going to read uh, uh, yet another familiar passage of scripture. But in it, I believe the Lord leads us to the divine understanding of this midweek Bible study lesson. Tonight the title of our midweek Bible study lesson is Hope in the Spirit. And we tonight will be specifically reading just a few short verses. Tonight we're going to read in the Gospel of Luke, the 8th um, chapter. That's where we're going to be reading. And we're going to read verses 40 through 48. Forgive me, I know you all know I have my notes and I read from my notes. Um, so if you hear the page rat, pages rattling, it's, it's my notes. And no, I'm not copying this off of the internet. <laughs> this is what the Lord has placed on my heart in the place uh, that he has us here at the church, and we thank the Lord God for it. And so, as we tonight continue in our series, and, and, and as we continue moving into a place with God who ministers to our lives, divine hope, tonight's midweek Bible study lesson specifically leads us in God's word, gleaning and learning as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about hope. And tonight is specifically hope in the spirit. And, and I like how the Lord unfolded uh, uh, the divine insight that he provided tonight for this lesson. This is something that is available to every baptized Christian believer. And, and I thank the Lord for it. I thank him for, for allowing me to, to read it and glean it out of his word. And so that's what I'm sharing on tonight. A Bible study reading, as I already mentioned, takes us into our New Testament scripture. As I already mentioned, once again, it is a very familiar passage of scripture. We are reading tonight in the Gospel of Luke. And, and 
Jesus, and the scripture is going to tell us in just a minute, is enthronged by, by, by crowds. And, and uh, Jesus is en route to heal uh, uh, the centurion's 12-year-old daughter. But en route to perform a divine miracle, another miracle transpires as, as, as healing virtue leaves his spirit. We know tonight our lesson is about hope in uh, uh, the spirit. And, and this is not something, um, um, and, and I'm going to keep right to the study for the sake of time. This is not something that we have to imagine. God is a tangible God. He is just as real as you and I. And, and, and so in his scripture tonight, he demonstrates, he shows us without a shadow of a doubt what hope in the spirit looks like. And I thank the Lord for that. And so tonight, the title of uh, our midweek Bible study lesson uh, for uh, uh, this evening is Hope in the Spirit. And so I want us to get right into the reading of God's word to stay within time. And so right now, um, I want you, because I always encourage that you read along with me in the word of God. And I also encourage that you read the word of God out loud. Because we already know here at the church, the word of God is active, the word of God is alive, and it's operating 24-7 on our behalf to accomplish that which the Lord God has sent forth for it to do. So tonight, we're reading in the word of God, we're turning to the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter. We're going to start reading tonight at the 40th verse, and we're going to conclude our, our midweek Bible study tonight at the 48th verse. It is, as we already know, just a few short verses, but it is imperative tonight that we encounter the divine difference of faith and hope. It's imperative that we encounter hope in the spirit. And, and, and this familiar passage of scripture helps us to get to what God has designed. It helps us to get there, hope in the spirit. And, and so as we continue um, and as God prepares us to, to see and to experience and to understand what I call God's trailblazing hope. And so we're starting tonight at the 40th verse. And as always, you already know we're going to be reading from the Amplified Bible and we're going to finish up our study tonight at verse 48. So with that, let us get right into the word of God. We're turning together to the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter. And we're going to pick up reading in the Gospel of Luke at the 40th verse. And so if you would, um, read along with me. Of course, your translation may be a little different, but we're all headed in the same direction in God. Amen. So, um... Luke chapter 8, verse 40, out of the Amplified Bible, reads for us on tonight. Now as Jesus was returning to Galilee, the people welcomed him, for they had all been expecting him. Now a man named Jairus, a synagogue official, came to him. And he fell at Jesus' feet and began begging him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. But as Jesus went, the people were crowding against him, almost crushing him. Verse 43, And a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years, and had spent all her money on physicians and could not be healed by anyone. Verse 44 came up behind him and touched the fringe of his outer robe and immediately her bleeding stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? While they all were denying it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the people are crowding and, and pushing against you. 
verse 46, but Jesus said, someone did touch me because I was aware that power to heal had gone out of me. Verse 47, when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling and fell down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Verse 48, he said to her, Daughter, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in me has made you well. Go in peace, untroubled, undisturbed well-being. This is where the Lord has us on tonight in his word as it pertains to hope in the spirit. This encounter, this um, passage that we're, we, we've read so many times uh, before, that we've heard so many times before, unfolds for us God's hope in the spirit. And how does he do that? We just look at the detail that the word of God provides us. We just look at uh, 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 all of the, the pieces involved in where she was, where Jesus was, what was going on and what transpired. This, this message is so rich for us tonight. This message, I believe, is so clear for us tonight as it pertains to hope in the spirit. It wasn't a private meeting. She didn't schedule an appointment. She didn't pay a whole bunch of money. She didn't go to a major conference. She wasn't in the synagogue. And, and so it's important that we come to where God is on tonight. And, and, and so if, if I could take, take the liberty for just a second to, to, to give an analogy, if I may, um, to me, and here's my analogy, Hope is like gasoline for your vehicle. You, you, you put the gasoline in, in your vehicle to, to drive it. That's hope. And, and, and faith is the actual vehicle itself. That's my analogy. That's my analogy. Now, now some of us drive Volvos. Some of us drive Mercedes and, and Lamborghinis and <laughs> the list can go on. Some of us drive Hyundais. But I want you to hear what I'm saying on tonight. I, I believe that with God, it really doesn't matter what you drive. I want to say that again. I, I, I believe with God, it really doesn't matter what you drive. <laughs> as long as you get to your divine destination, as long as you get to the place where God has designed for you. And I'm leave that right there. So tonight, as the Lord graces us in his word, we see that, again, it's a familiar story. As the Lord graces us in his word, we see uh, 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 that, that, that Christ was enthroned, that, that, that there was a crowd of people around him. The Amplified Bible says that they were crushing him, that, that the crowd was, was, was pushing up against him. And, and, and there's no way of, of telling 
in that crowd with the natural eye who took virtue from Christ's spirit because it was just that many people. It was just that much crushing and pushing and crowding. But the woman with the issue of blood, the woman who, who had spent all that she had with doctors and was still not healed, came forward. And, and, and she fell at Jesus' feet confessing what, um, 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 and I'm going to take liberty here, what her hope in the spirit performed for her. Now, now remember my analogy, the gasoline is needed for the vehicle to, to, to get her to her divine healing, to get her to her miraculous healing. See, see, if we look at hope the way that the world tells us and in the light in, 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 in the way the world dictates, we will never have enough gasoline in our vehicles. And, and, and so I pray you, you can follow where God is leading us tonight. See, see, the, the thing that is unseen, the, the, the thing that, that, that becomes extremely significant is the thing that, um, as I mentioned, when, when, when the Lord first led us into this study of hope is often uh, undervalued and overlooked. But, but here in, in just these few verses, I believe the Lord is reminding us to take care of our gasoline. That's the analogy tonight. So that our vehicles will work. So that our vehicle will get us to destiny. Tonight, the, the, the Lord let us see and, 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 and experience and understand that virtue left his spirit. Because the woman with the issue of blood had hope, specifically hope in the spirit. See, but the scripture says her, her thought was if she could only touch the hem of his garment. We know she, she wasn't trying to, to schedule a meeting or to get on his calendar. No, she wasn't trying to do that. And, and, and because uh, 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 of, of, of her condition, I believe she, she, she possessed a, a, a hope in the spirit. And, and, and that hope in the spirit led her to encounter Christ's spirit so much so that it stopped him in his tracks to inquire about who touched him, to inquire about the, the virtue that left his spirit. Tonight I want us to, just for a minute, ponder that for a moment. As, as the Lord God unfolds for us, what, what he's revealing, uh, uh, the insight that he's providing for us tonight in his word, in our lives, in, in our circumstances and situations. Oftentimes, when, when we're faced with major issues, we, we try to, to schedule a meeting with Jesus. And that's natural, we're human. But God tonight is reminding us that it only requires hope in the spirit of God, hope in the spirit of Christ Jesus. And I didn't want to rush it because it's important that 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 drops. It's important that 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 seed is is planted, planted. And 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 so uh in understanding how the Lord is leading us in his word on tonight, in in understanding that sometimes it is what we suffer. Sometimes it's what we go through that that um, 
helps us to, to realize and, and recognize hope in the spirit. See, the Lord um, is such a relational God. And I and I was and I think I shared this with you already. I was sharing with a young mother. Uh, oftentimes we read about God in the Bible. We come to know God in His Word, but when our life situations hit us, we're looking for uh, uh, the story that the pastor told us to fix our situation. But God is saying, "I'm right here. I'm tangible." I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I am Jehovah Rapha, your healer. I am Jehovah Nisi. And, and it's so amazing that he would make himself available to our imperfections, to our, our, our humanness, that he would draw nigh unto us at our lowest of the lowest of the low and present himself to us. He's the only God that cares just that much to, to draw just that nigh unto us. And so tonight, before we close, um, I know that the Lord has and continues to be very, very gracious with us. And, and, and I know that he's graced us with this study and with this series uh, to remind us, I believe, that that hope is something that um, we really don't know that we have until we really, really need it, until we desperately need it. And, and as we, 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 we talk about hope, we're talking specifically about divine hope, the, the eternal, the hope, the hope, the, the hope that, that comes from believing in and, and trusting in Christ Jesus. The hope that, and I need to remind us of this on tonight, that that stands with, that that stands alongside one of what I deem as the big three as, as, as revealed to us in, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, you, you all know that I've, I've, I've deemed that as our staple verse. And so I want to take the liberty to read that for us on tonight. Out of the Amplified Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now there remain faith, abiding trust in God and his promises, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choices, graces, but the greatest of these is love. That's our staple verse for this entire month. And, and these are what I call the big three, faith, hope, and love. But this month, the month of October, just before we get into our major holiday, holidays, God reminds us of his divine hope. And and, and I, I, for me, I don't think words can express or, 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 or can really capture what God has really, really done for us, even before the foundation of the world. And, and I'm going to leave that alone because that's a whole nother Bible study lesson. But as the Lord leads our life in this month of hope, during this time of coming into what I call the full manifestation of God's divine hope, God takes us into yet another very familiar passage of scripture. We just read about the woman with the issue of blood. And, and as we read about that, that that passage always, almost always, reference or refers to or is connected to faith, which is still one of the big three. But tonight, I needed us to take just a minute and be reminded of the difference between faith and hope. And, and if you haven't already, if, if you Google, um, Google will tell you that uh, faith is is the result of, 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 of our, our, our belief system. 
Google will tell you that that hope is is the product of desiring um, a, a, a future state. And and as we read in 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 First uh, uh, Corinthians thirteen thirteen, and I'm trying to keep it simple, which is our staple verse. It says faith. In the Amplified Bible, abiding trust in God and his promises. Our staple verse says, and hope is confident expectation of eternal salvation. So tonight we are encouraged to reach and and keep reaching for confident expectation of eternal salvation. That's that divine hope. That's that thing that no man, no woman, no boy or girl can take from us. And and I think that um, when it comes to experiencing God, even over the months the Lord has been ministering uh, um, in our lives, divine divine insights, and even tonight in this account of Scripture. Jesus was on his way to perform a miracle for the centurion, his for his 12-year-old daughter. And, and the scripture tells us that the crowd was expecting him. The crowd was waiting. And it was so many people. The Amplified Bible says the people were crushing. The people were pushing it. The crowd was so intense. But in the midst of all of this, there was this woman who had been sick for 12 long years. If you would, just go with me for a minute. Normally, if your physical body has been under attack for 12 long years, you don't have, this is my assumption, the strength of a regular person to be in the midst of a a, a crushing or pushing crowd of people to, to be enthronged in a crowd of people but but what is so wonderful for us tonight is the fact that her hope in the spirit led her to to believe led her to think even in the midst of the crowd i don't i don't need to to shake his hand I don't need to have face time with him. Her mindset was, if I could only just touch the hem of his garment. If we can move to that place in and with God where our hope in the spirit leads us. To touch the hem of his garment, wholly, fully, and completely believing then God's response will definitely almost always be who touched me? We we praise God for for that on tonight. We honor and bless and thank God for that on tonight. You may not be able to see it right now, but that doesn't mean God and the power of who God is is not working. You may not feel that right now, but that does not mean that God is not God and that he is not operating and functioning and flowing on our behalf in every circumstance, in every situation. Even those things we can't even uh, uh, have enough words to mouth, even those prayers that we don't even have the courage or the strength to pray. And we thank the Lord for that. That is just God being God on our behalf. So tonight, the Lord blesses us. He blesses us with hope in the spirit. It's all right if we don't fully understand it. It still doesn't limit God and who God is in our lives. Amen. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and close out this midweek Bible study lesson. As always, I do want to take just a few minutes to share our weekly announcements. Um, We are in our end of month uh, time. So we will be um, taking um, our midweek Bible study uh, lesson on tonight and um, Sunday morning for us here at the church because we're in our end of month worship time. Sunday morning we'll have our Sunday school time and directly after our Sunday school time we'll go into our end of month worship and and 
always we know that the Lord is ministering to our lives about divine hope this month and we're excited about what the Lord will share um, um, it seems like this month the the way that the Lord unfolds himself the way that the Lord reveals himself in this month has been absolutely precious it, it's like an exclamation mark from him saying that I'm right here all along however many years you've been on this earth I am absolutely right here I want you all to continue to pray for our international pastors we bless God I think I already mentioned one of our international pastors will have a baby and so we're excited about that we're praying for uh, one of our international pastors that they would be able to purchase a house and have a, 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 a home church service for them and we're praying for the outreach that's going on and continue to pray for our international mission, our very first short-term mission to Costa Rica in 2023. Continue to pray for the pastors there, pray for their community, pray uh, for their needs. Um, and um, we're, we're just, we're just graced by God. We're just so very thankful that God has been um, uh, tremendously gracious and, and good to us here at Life in Christ International Church. With that, continue to keep our young people in your prayers as well as their parents. Uh, during this time, uh, during this economy, and you all know I could list it. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close out tonight. With that, I will see you all Sunday morning for our Sunday school time together at 10 a.m. And then directly after that, we'll go into our end of month worship. God bless you. I pray that this time in the Lord has blessed your soul. I pray that this time in the Lord has enriched you. And we'll see you back here Sunday morning. God bless.